Thank you so much for joining us for Look Before You Speak. This is a program um, in Missoula here that celebrates people who are our gifts to our community. And uh, today we have a very special guest who's going to talk about some very special images as well. Our guest is Ted Hughes. He's the registrar at the Missoula Art Museum. Part of the format of the program is to take the opportunity to take a longer look at images. So often in television, the images are up for one, two, maybe three seconds. So we really take our time in this program and look at images and, and talk about them. Uh, the Missoula Art Museum is the caretaker of the packs and murals that are in the courthouse, and uh, they just celebrated their um, anniver 100th anniversary, which mm -hmm. was, was that 1914 they were installed? And yes. So, uh, and they're currently being stored while the courthouse is being renovated. So I thought we'd take this time to talk a little bit about mm -hmm. them and, uh, and also thank uh, Ted for overseeing their care and uh, in custody for the, uh, the county of Missoula. So, Ted, welcome. I'm happy to be here, thanks. <laughs> And uh, your background is in art history, isn't mm -hmm. it? I have a master's in art history. And uh, how long have you worked at the uh, Missoula Art Museum? Uh, eight and a half years. So you've really overseen a lot of uh, the murals as far as uh, being conserved and then uh, being put away in, in storage. And uh, perhaps they're going to reformat them when they put them back into the original structure. They're going to have uh, better frames, more beautiful, elegant frames when they go back up, possibly this fall. Oh, that's great. Now, the, the murals originally, when they were installed, were, mm -hmm. um, I think they were adhered directly onto the concrete. So mm -hmm. there's been a great deal of conservation um, under the supervision of the museum. and. Uh, and they're re-stretched and they're in pretty good shape from what I understand. But they were glued right on the wall, which didn't let them breathe very well. And it also damaged them with moisture and mold. So by the 60s, they were starting to fall apart and there was mold visible on them and flaking. So the county and the state raised quite a bit of money to have them all professionally conserved by a conservator in New York City. And he stretched them on these aluminum stretchers, bars, that allow them to breathe now. And they're in really good shape still. That was the late 70s, early 80s. Mm -hmm. And they're looking good. Well, let's take a look at one or two of them. And, okay. uh, now, oh boy, this is an iconic image for Missoula, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. This is Chief Charlo and the Salish leaving the Bitterroot. Um, in another painting, we'll see a, a picture, painting of the treaty where they signed away their rights to the Bitterroot Valley without realizing it, but um, it was traditionally part of their land in their hunting area. And this must have been, what, the late, the 1890s? So, yeah, I think that's correct. Now, the, the, uh, ar army, <clears throat> the army, who's not present in this painting, um, is escorted. escorted the Salish out of the Bitterroot. Now, um, that's Lolo Peak in the background mm -hmm. there. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's interesting that uh, how did this process come about where these paintings that are about the Missoula region or area uh, to, were to be placed in the courthouse? Well, when the courthouse was built, in, in uh, I believe it opened in 1912, they just used a stock decoration company who put up these sort of generic stock paintings in the courthouse uh, entryway. And the people of Missoula did not like them at all, and they started complaining about them right away. It's typical Missoula's <laughs> still the same today. Or if they don't like something, they'll step up and say it. Um, but it was spearheaded by the Women's Club of Missoula to raise the money to hire Paxson to do a series of paintings that had to do with the history of the valley itself. 
and not some sort of generic subject matter. Um, and Paxson agreed to do it for a deal. All the paintings he, he did for $1,500, which was a steal at the time. And he said he'd complete them in one year. It took him about 16 months. Yeah. So they were installed in uh, 1914. Here's, mm -hmm. here's another mural mm -hmm. that we can look at. <clears throat> and tell us about this. This is the Hellgate Treaty. Uh, that's Governor Stevens in the middle, and the Salish people are, are signing away their rights to the Bitterroot, but they didn't realize it at the time. Um, and uh, to be moved on, to eventually be moved on to the Flathead Reservation. And it has lots of characters in there. And there's, Paxson's paintings have this sort of stillness to them mm -hmm. that you can see in this one. And the, there's these kind of funny, gigantic teepees in the background too. But um, sort of a traditional, almost Civil War portrait looking Governor Stevens in the middle there staring out at us. And wh where is the location of this uh, painting supposed to have? That's at Council Grove, I believe, which mm -hmm. is a state park now, just uh, west of town. Mm -hmm. That's great. Now let's look at another mural here. <clears throat> so here's Lewis um, crossing the Clark Fork. After they went out to, all the way to the coast and were coming back, Lewis and Clark split up. And Clark went south, and Lewis continued um, east. And when they came out, they took the long way, the long, hard way. Sacagawea kind of took them <laughs> all the way down the Rocky Mountains to her people in Idaho. But when they came back, the Nez Perce said, "This is well." They had gone over uh, Lolo, so they were coming back that way. Yeah. If you're going to go back to the plains, you should just go this way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Up, up the Blackfoot. In the, the Nez Pierce just assumed that the Lewis and Clark were going to get killed by the Blackfeet. <laughs> so they said, Arrivederci, it was nice knowing you. <laughs> um, well, it's, it's really, um, I think it's one of the treasures that's here in the community, the fact that the women's club stood up for a local artist mm -hmm. and local stories. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, Certainly there's been a lot of work and maybe revisionist history mm -hmm. and uh, actually uh, some formatting of history and interpretation mm -hmm. that's occurred over the years in interpreting the murals. And uh, I know a great deal of scholarship's gone into that as well. Mm -hmm. So the county is extremely fortunate to uh, have uh, responsible caretakers overseeing mm -hmm. their uh, care and custody. So. And yeah. what's going on here? Well, this is a couple, two, three years ago when the Paxson murals, were, the paintings were taken down off the wall and crated, and they're in secure storage now while the county goes through its renovation and restoration of that part of the courthouse, which they're just working on right now. And it's, it's looking very beautiful. Yeah. Well, that's great, and I think uh, there's, uh, how many murals are there altogether? There's eight. <clears throat> and different sizes and scales. And yeah. I think a lot of times people um, uh, in Missoula forget mm -hmm. that this is a, such a wonderful opportunity to, to uh, take visitors to and mm -hmm. show them a lot of true stories that were uh, about the, the community. Out, people, tourists go there all the time Yeah, to look at them. And they're in the front, uh, the front part of the courthouse is, uh, there's a rotunda and entryway and a mm -hmm. grand staircase. So you walk up through the murals themselves and I see that this is uh, um, a slide of some of the murals being uh, removed and they're up pretty high. Yes. So you have an opportunity to go up the stairwell and see them kind of different angles. Um, so and they're scheduled to be uh, reinstalled when? Last I heard 
possibly this fall. Mm -hmm. They'll be finished. They're planning on having that part of the courthouse remodeled. And um, then they'll be able to rehang the, yeah. the paintings. I think a lot of people don't uh, realize how um, active Paxson was. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, he did a great number of murals in mm -hmm. the state mm -hmm. capitol. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he was kind of a frontiersman. I know that he had come out here and he had arrived here the year after um, the Battle of the Little Bighorn. Mm -hmm. And he was very obsessed with documenting and, and uh, recording that event and probably led to the masterpiece that he did, which, you know, is down at the um, Cody Museum. The, the Custer's Last Stand. Yeah. Painting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And is, is this a drawing of him? Or no, a, that's a photograph of our guy, <clears throat> Paxson. He knew how to make his own buckskins. He was a crack shot. He knew how to make mo moccasins. He really wanted to be a frontiersman, but he just got out here just a little too late. The frontier was coming to an end. And when we were visiting earlier, you were mm -hmm. saying he was good friends with Charlie Russell mm -hmm. and. Boy, the Russell back. had a lot of admiration for him. Yeah. That's the hip strip, man. That's the hip strip. <laughs> there's the Babs. And there's Paxson on his horse in his frontiersman outfit. And, uh, you know, he remained active in the local uh, militia, what probably mm -hmm. would have is today the National Guard. Mm -hmm. He was active in that group. And I know that he. He went away and served in the Philippines. Yeah, um, and he was an officer, I believe a lieutenant in the guard, and he volunteered to go fight in the Philippines War, even though he was 46 years old <laughs> at the time. And <clears throat> There's two things I've heard. I, either he got malaria, I've heard he got malaria and was really sick, and that another thing I heard was the, the ship he was on was in a storm and he got his ribs crushed by a crate or something. Hmm. So he was debilitated from one of those two things yeah. pretty much for the rest of his life. I think when uh, Kirby Lambert with the Historical Society mm -hmm. uh, did talk a great deal about uh, his struggle with malaria when he came mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, uh, you know, the State Historic Museum has a... Uh, a fine archive of his sketchbooks and journals. And, uh, you know, I think that Missoulians are, are really looking forward to the reinstallation of the murals and, uh, mm -hmm. and wanted to thank you and the museum for being uh, great caretakers of uh, a local treasure. Well, and yourself as well. <laughs> you were curator at the museum for what was it, 55 years? <laughs> 25 years? This uh, book was recently, it came out during the, uh, uh, all of the attention that was given to the uh, Lewis and Clark expedition, but the Patrick Gass, who was on the expedition, he mm -hmm. also wrote a journal. Mm -hmm. And so when this came out, they did use a reproduction of uh, this crossing, and this is supposed to be Patrick Gass right in the center mm -hmm. of uh, Paxson's mural. And, and Paxson attempted to be pretty faithful to historically. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, but I think um, you know, all the details of history mm -hmm. are, are come up to the teller. And uh, anyway, this book, and I uh, can show that. And there's a lot of good books out there on Paxson. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think there's uh, hasn't been a definitive uh, biography produced about him yet, but uh, I think that will come about. There's E.S. Paxson, Frontier Artist, which was written by his grandson. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the most in-depth one about Paxson. Yeah. Well, I want to uh, thank you for coming out today, and thanks for participating in this program. and. Uh, I want to invite Missoulians when the murals are installed mm -hmm. to uh, take them back in. They're going to look wonderful, reframed, reformatted, mm -hmm. and uh, 
probably repositioned a little bit just to protect them a little bit more. And I believe the commissioners will rededicate the murals to the people of Missoula County. Well, that's great. So I want to thank you for coming out and thank you for filling us in on everything that's going on. And uh, thanks for tuning in.